Aloha from the island of Oahu. <laughs> it's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. On today's subscriber sponsored request, we're taking a trip to possibly the most beautiful place in the world, and that is Hawaii. The subscriber that sponsored this is asking for three different dishes, all native to Hawaii, and I believe she is native to Hawaii as well, but no longer lives there. But she'd like me to make and eat some of her cuisine from her, you know, heritage. So we're gonna do Kalua pork, we're doing loco moco, and then also a ramen cabbage style salad. So let's get into this, lots to do. This is a big one, long time to cook this guy, but uh, let's get into it. Okay, so we've got a pork butt and or shoulder, and what I'm just gonna do here is score it down, maybe like an inch. I'm gonna do a crisscross score diagonal. And we're gonna work in two things, liquid smoke. And I could not find the ale, or I don't know how to really say it, that salt. Old Canuck land didn't have it, so we're using Himalayan pink for this. I was able to find this mesquite liquid smoke. I don't know if that's proper, but uh, it's all I can find. So we're gonna go in with a good amount of dabs of this into the crevasses much a one two three job you just got to do that and then you got to season it with your coarse salt in this case like I said Himalayan pink and I'm gonna give this just like a flip flip and a toss around do the other side all right I've seen a bunch of different methods there this is just a long low and slow basically cook I'm gonna do the tinfoil method though that's the one that I saw that I think I like the best they would normally wrap this in banana leaves traditionally, but uh, don't have it in here. So she suggested just tossing in a banana and I hope she meant just like this. So that should infuse some flavors. Obviously at the end, we just throw it out, but uh, I'm gonna wrap this up. It's gonna be loud. So I'll cut that out and then we're gonna toss it in the oven. Okay, so we've got our pork butt bundle in here with a banana <laughs> and it's gonna go in for probably like four and a half, five hours at 325. All right, scratch gravy for loco moco. Got to melt down a few tablespoons of butter, of course. Match that butter amount with flour, basically. Incorporate and cook down your roux, but don't burn your roux. Keep it nice and low while you're cooking it out. Okay, semi-thick cooked down roux achieved. Going with the beef broth today. Beef gravy. Okay, now we slowly bring this together up into a thick simmer. Okay, coming in with some beef concentrate for this. We get extra beefy. A little Worcestershire sauce to season it. Definitely a nice bunch of cracked pepper. Hold your, hold the phone here. He's going in with a Dijon mustard squirt. All right, we got a whip of dressing for the salad. So we're going in with some oil here, whatever you want to do. I'm just doing canola. You guys know that's my oil. And we're going to match that with white wine vinegar, basically half and half. Coming in with a bunch of sugar, nice uh, half cup, three quarter cup, a dash of soy, and a tiny little splizzash of sesame oil. And we whip. And we taste. Ooh, and she's great. That's really good. Just for information's sake, this goes into the salad. This is toasted sunflower seeds. We got some slivered almond. There's a couple little tortilla chunks from the kit that I bought because I couldn't find just straight up cabbage salad. And then we got ramen noodles. So you mix all those up and those go into the salad. Okay, so for the local moco, we do need mushroom and onion. So I'm gonna do like a thin slice on my mush, just like this. Thinish. Onions also can be a fun cut. However, they get you in your feelings. They get you crying. So I'm doing these long onion styles. So we just go along the natural, whatever you want to call that, like the grain or whatever. And I'm just gonna nip it off at the end. And then we have what we need, these guys. All right, gravy has come together as a full grown person here. So we're looking good. I need to taste test though, just to see where we're at for salt, but I think we should be good. 
it is perfect. Wow, that is so good. All right, de-starched, washed, short grain sushi rice going in. We have a cup going in, and I am gonna have to adjust this water here. We need a little bit more in here. Okay, so the perfect amount is up to this line when your tip of your finger touches the rice. So when you feel the rice and the water meets that part of your finger, apparently that's perfect. Had this on the lowest flame for like 15 minutes, trying to absorb the remainder of this water. So we gotta saute off these mushrooms and onions. Oil on the bottom, a little oil on the top. All right, these guys got real nice color on them. Nice and golden brown, caramelization station. And uh, they're good to go. Okay, you're gonna incorporate those into the gravy that we made. Go ahead and mix these in, make a nice little marriage. Looking and smelling delish. Got our local moco burger patty formed here, nice and perfect. As per usual, we're just gonna hit it with the cracked pepper and the salt. That's how I like to treat all my burgers. None of this filler, none of this fancy jazz, just a nice classic salty peppery patty. Pat, 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 that's why they call it a patty. Here comes the Kahlua. Admittedly, I went over time on this because I like my meat a little more well cooked. I don't like it too wet and juicy, but here we are. We got the Kahlua pork here. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it. I have let it come down to like almost room temp because pulling hot meat is very hard. Don't get caught pulling your hot pork, you know? Pull your pork when it's room temperature. <laughs> Better that way. Also, your subway gloves won't melt and adhere to your hand, causing you to have to go to the ER, okay? So, let's just pull this apart. Super easy, right? It just comes easily apart. You don't have to do much. Just look at that. It just melts in my hand. I'm just gonna pull it into some pieces, like chunky chunks, not too, too shredded, just into pieces, just like so. So down here is all like the real fatty stuff. That's where all the, all that fat, look at it, it's all just greasing everywhere. Just greasing. I got it for you, a little tender bite. Crispy on the outside, still tendy in the middle. Not tendity, tender, tendy. There you go. Kalua. Y'all know I gotta take that little crispy bite right now. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Have to have another. Wow. Sticky rice is ready to be formed. Tiny bit of oil into our bowl so that it doesn't stick and it will drop out when it's time with just the tiniest bit of oil and then of course we have to pack that with our rice our fluffy sticky rice and just smooth it over even on the edges like a dome an igloo dome it will be Perfect. All right, it's burger patty time. Maybe some hot oil. Perfect. And last but not least, the fried egg. Now we go ahead and build the main event, the loco moco. Burger patty placed atop. Spoon on that mushroom and onion gravy all day. Like that. And the piece de resistance. The fried egg, which has overcooked, I believe. And that's unfortunate. 
but oh well, it is what it is. I didn't get the runny yolk. That's very bothersome, but oh well. It'll have to do, because I've already placed it atop, and if I redo it, it's gonna look ugly and gross, and that's just how it's gonna have to be. Of course, we have to have our side of the Kahlua, the smoky banana Kahlua pork. And of course our cabbage noodle salad. There it is, Kahlua cabbage noodle. I forgot a little green onion to finish. Let's go ahead and get a bite into this before she's too cool. Aloha from the island of Oahu. All right, so loco moco, and you guys saw the size, but I can't fit it all. That's the issue with just having this much uh, room. But this is loco moco, a uh, Hawaiian dish. Now I did commit a sin. I'm sorry I overcooked the egg. I know, cardinal sin it is what it is. But this is an, a, a well overdue video for a uh, longtime lovely loyal subscriber named Denise, who originally hails from the islands of Oahu, I do believe, at least from Hawaii, I know that. And uh, she has since moved away uh, to other lands in the States, but uh, she loves her native roots based in Hawaii and the foods there in those lands. So she has commissioned me to try some of their local favorites, this being that. And uh, I'm stoked for it. I'm, I'm very, very excited. Can't go wrong with a, uh, a burger rendition. So uh, let's get right into this for a bite and we'll just have some chats about it. I do want to uh, just see what I'm cutting over here right quick. Oh, we got quite the squishy sound. I don't know that I've ever had a burger over rice. I've definitely had a burger with egg. I've definitely had a burger with like uh, gravy and onions and mushrooms for sure. I feel like this is almost the, uh, let's say the Hawaiian version of really almost like a Salisbury steak in a sense, just with rice. But there we go, inside look. That's a big bite, but we'll get it. Mm. The rice came out per perfect as I choke. Uh, just cook wise, texturally speaking. Mm. And uh, out of that mold, worked really well. Mm. Gravy is perfectly salty, perfectly peppery. This is nice, really nice. Um, Denise, if you're watching, which I'm sure that you are, because this is your video, and I told you I would make good on it this week, because if, uh, if this was an assignment or had to, had, had to hand in to pass the class, I'd have failed the class big time. I'm way behind on this, so I'm very, very sorry about that. Little interior look for you guys. Patty came out clean and nice too. Great sear on it. Um, 
as far as acknowledging Denise directly to you, I hope we, we had some pretty serious chats in the email, in our email, live chat. And I hope you're doing well with what we were talking about. Very hard tasks, but worth it, you know? And also, I know that you are, but I hope you're still pursuing your hula dance, your hula dreams, basically. Uh, that is her dream, is to be a hula dancer professionally um, and just embody the philosophy, the spirit of hula as a lifestyle, like as a culture and a lifestyle. I believe she very much finds um, identity and, uh, you know, purpose in her roots and the philosophy of the culture of her roots. And from what I get from our conversation that we have is that she wants to embody that as a person in her lifestyle. And, um, you know, practice parts of those roots professionally as a career, as a dream career. So you know me, I said go for it. I say Peter Pan syndrome all the way. I say authenticity all the way. I say as far as we know, this is your, you know, your one time around here, being the you that you are now. And if that's what speaks to your soul, gives you goosebumps, guides you, right, in that, in that feeling, then I say, go for it. As much as you possibly can whilst not being destitute, right? I know, it's tough. Trust me. I got a lot of dreams and goals that have not come to fruition. And it's tough, it's rough. It's painful, it hurts. But if you give up completely, then it's definitely never going to happen. You know what I mean? All right. Let's try some of this salad and this pork. Okay. First things first. Nice little nip of pork. What can I tell you? Smoky, salty, just a little bit of a hint of that sweet fruit, the banana. Kind of just like a, a fragrance, just pulls apart. Greasy, not fat. Tender. Just a nice bite of chunked pulled pork. Now, I don't know if this is against 
ethically against the Hawaiian Kalua code. But you guys know I love dipping sauces. Especially when it comes with, you know, ribs. This is basically ribs, but not. All right. Just nice slow cooked pork. I'm hitting it with the baby rays. What's it to you? You know? Mm. Very, very good. That's really what it tastes like, honestly. A nice, nice, well done, like made ribs, but just with all the meat pulled off the bone. It's a perfect comparison. Right? Oh yeah. It's a fall apart. Tend to poke. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right, now this salad, I'm looking forward to this salad. I love this type of salad. I love Asian inspired salads anything nutty umami with that sweet and anything with cold texture and crunch so my vibe simplest dressing ever high sugar content but it balances Mm. I love it. So fresh. The toasted nuts. Just make it. Reminds me of a salad that my Top mom would always make called Itchy Ben. It's a cabbage ramen salad, but it has also mushrooms. And bean sprouts. No carrots in that one. But very similar. And we always have it. A bunch of times in the summer for family. We have like family dinner, dinner on Sundays sometimes. And it tends to make regular appearances. But anyways, shout out. Hawaii, I want to go so bad. Never been. My sister wanted to go for her 40th, but it's too expensive for everybody. Like, not everybody can afford it. <laughs> but I've watched like lifestyle vlogs of people who live there, travel there, live there. Incredible. And then watching uh, the show, The White Lotus, or White Lotus. I know, more resort-ish, but you still get to see the scenery in it and understand that it's amazing. Also that show was awesome in my opinion. If you never watched White Lotus, check it out. It was very interesting to me. Mm. 
such a good salad. Wow. I'm going to have more of that in about an hour for sure. But, uh, yeah, very delicious. Um, as far as the cooking, everything coming together, quite the uh, event. Just a lot of timing involved with this, right? Pork takes tons, like five, four hours, five hours. Right, then you got to like kind of rest, pull it. You don't want to dress the salad too early because then you're going to deal with like not optimal crunch, right? You want that optimal crunch and coldness. So you dress that last second. The rice, you have to cook ahead of time, fluff up, let sit, let fluff. Then you got to form it, put it on, all that stuff. And then, you know, burger patty, let that rest. And then the egg, which I screwed up is like the last, the very last finicky part where everything's ready, right? You're like plating everything. And then the egg is that last, like it has to be that fresh, hot, right on top and crack, but I overcooked it, right? Like I took it off the pan, it sat for 30 extra seconds. And then I was left with a, uh, a medium yolk, like a almost hard boiled, but not like a soft boiled yolk, essentially like an over easy, but not over easy, you know what I mean? So, over hard, over easy, over medium, whatever. Like I'm saying though, <laughs> components, timing in all of this. So quite the adventure to put together in, in like a perfect format, but I dropped the ball in the egg. I will take onus for that. And it burns my ass to know that I did that. But I uh, say sorry to the Hawaiian deities, okay? If that's what they refer them to as, I don't know. But I'm sorry about the egg, okay? All right, thank you, Denise. Hope you're doing well with everything. Till the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well, stay true.